Happy friends. Happy Sunday. My name is Heidi Scott. This is DIY Dreaming. This is my good friend Diane Brown that just drove two days to get here from Iowa to visit with me for a while. And I'm so oh, glad to be oh, here. I'm so glad you're here too. So Diane is going to um, assist in the uh, Christ and crafting that we're going to do today. We're going to make I'm gonna show you how to make some fun new flowers. I'm gonna put that away so you can be a little bit surprised when we get to it. We're gonna stencil a pillow and then make the flowers. And then- Wait till you see the new flower. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And then- um, You go ahead. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna um, talk about prayer. And you can pull up either one of those. Okay, so, so how's everyone doing? Thank you so much for joining me. Um, all right, well, let's jump straight in. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to use one of these pillow forms that comes from Magnolia. And I didn't put a link, darn it. But as soon as I'm done, uh, I will get you a link for the pillows, for the stencil, for the ink, for all that good stuff. And if you want any specific information, just let me know. So I'm just opening it up, and I'm going to grab a paper towel and put it inside. We're using this, um, this stencil that I love so much, you guys. It says, I still remember the days I prayed for the things that I have now. It's really awesome. I have another project over here that I did last year when I first got that stencil. And I get so many questions about it. So let me just show you. Does anybody remember this? We made these um, clothesline flowers, and I stenciled. This is just a tarnished silver tray that I painted with some creamy um, paint. I stenciled with gray chalk paste. We made the flowers, glued everything on. That was a fun project. So we're using that same stencil. Okay, so I put a paper towel on the inside here, and um, that's so that if the ink that we're going to be using if it bleeds through it won't ruin the back of the pillow and you guys these two pillows um i'm going to be giving them away tomorrow they're going to go in the blessing bundles um so if you want to be included in that um this this go around i was just asking people to help me figure out which eight by ten stencils i should get from magnolia so you could hop over to Magnolia DIY, that's my website. Take a little peek at the eight by 10 stencils. Take a screenshot of the one that you like the best. That helps me. And then share that in the comments here. And then tomorrow I'll pick a couple of names. Okay, I think that's good enough. It's not exactly in the center. I do want it to be straight, okay. Diane, what is your favorite color ink? Boy, I like the new colors. I like azure. Oh, uh huh. I think and, I have that one. And I like the new. There's a new pink, a darker pink. Uh huh. And I, I have that one or not? And We're the new magnolia green is pretty. Oh yeah. We're using cocoa bean. Here, let me just a little bit here. There we go. Now we can see part of you. <laughs> okay. So um, we're doing a sunflower kind of theme for our design. We're using some of this five and a half inch wide burlap ribbon in a yellow and a brown color. So um, I thought about using this ink, which is called pineapple yellow. Um, it could be cute, but it doesn't exactly go with the, um, the burlap. So I'm opting not to use this yellow and we're just gonna use this yummy uh, cocoa bean. So I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is to do. These stencils from Magnolia are awesome. They are, um, they're reusable many, many, many times. They're adhesive, they are uh, mesh, so they're super, um, super detailed. They don't slide around like some of your, uh, you know, non-adhesive, non-mesh stencils do. And 
They're super easy to work with. I love them. So, and this is one of my favorite ones here. If you want to see it after I'm all done, just let me know in the comments and I'll get you a link so you can hop over and take a peek. So I'm so excited to have my friend here. I was waiting for her to get here before I came live. I said, do you, do you want to come live with me? And she said, yeah. I said, okay, yay. For those of you that live in the Midwest, we're not there anymore. Once you're here, the, oh, the trees are in bloom, the flowers, it's beautiful. Yeah. I forgot how beautiful spring was in the when south. we lived here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Diane lived in this area for how many years? Five years. And now she lives in Des Moines. What's the name of your little town? Johnston? Johnston. Yeah. And Heidi and I attended the same church, but it's 16,000 people, so we never, we didn't yeah. know each and other. Yeah, and we lived not far from each other, no. too, but we just, our paths didn't cross. Okay, so I have all of my ink on here. I'm just going to take a little peek. Let's see, where do I need to... This is so easy, you guys. Um, I hear some people saying, oh, it's so hard. It is totally not hard at all. Okay, there's a tub right behind you. Thank you, my lovely assistant. Check that. So, this is what we have. And now we're gonna do the flowers. Oh my gosh, isn't that cute though? So it's brown ink. What will happen is I will let it completely dry, then I'll use a hot iron to heat set it, and then theoretically you could wash this, it would be just fine, but we're gonna put some of these burlap flowers on here and they would not survive a wash. So, <laughs> so I'm heat setting it for whoever the two people are that I'm gonna be giving it to, just in case somebody would sit next to it with a wet jacket or something, um, but, I would not wash it because these flowers will come apart. So now I'm going to show you how to make new flowers and I'll tell you all the details about where everything came from. Let's see. Let's find a place to stash that over there. Okay, so I am going to be crafting on my, um, I feel like I'm tipping over, on my uh, Wilton cake board because I don't want to get glue all over my craft table. And we're using these two colors of burlap ribbon. It's five and a half inches wide. This is the dark brown, and this is the yellow. This one I picked up at Walmart for like $4.88. I know they also have a yellow too, but this one in particular I got at Hobby Lobby yesterday, and it was around $5 as well. So there, you can do a ton of different things with these. And um, let's start with just a simple flower that looks like this one right here. Okay. So, you want me to do anything? Say so. Um, I'll have you pull some strings out. Sounds great. Yeah. So I'm going to measure this in just a second. I'll tell you how long it is. Okay, so usually I'll just cut a strip, and this is probably around, oh, it's a little bit longer than 12 inches. It's probably 16 inches. There's no specific um, length that you have to do it. I usually pull out one or two of these strands here at the end because it makes it easier to get a hold of these. And I've done a ton of videos on pulled string burlap flowers. I think Diane was the one that first figured out how to make them flat. Do you remember that? Let's and see. so now it's take, it took me a year to figure that out too. And so now we're gonna make some flat pulled string burlap flowers using this. So I'm gonna let Diane over there pull some of that out and I'm going to, do you wanna come over here? How, do you want it three left or how yeah, many do you three. And I'm gonna do a bigger one for, let's see, for the other flower. And I'm going to show you my little trick that I just learned. Well, I didn't learn it. I just was tired of trying to get a hold of the strings. Okay, so when you cut your burlap, try to cut it in 
you know, one of these channels. Can you see that, how I did that? And then I usually will pull out a couple, a couple from the end so I can get a hold of it easy. Okay, and so I just thought about using some tweezers and it makes it so much easier. I will hold it down with one hand like this and then I'll just grab a string and you literally just pull them out and hang on to your strings because you can make tassels, um, you can do all kinds of things. So look how easy this is when you're using some little... That is faster than what I'm doing. <laughs> Do you want some, some no, of these too? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm just thinking when I go home, that's what I'm going to use. Yeah, it just makes it so much easier. Let's have a race. Who can get done first? Well, I started first, so I'm... You're ahead of me. Yeah, that's a cheat. How are you all today? I hope you're having a beautiful day. The weather here is gorgeous. Yeah, it definitely is. A week was, ago, Sunday, we had snow on the ground. Oh my gosh. I know there's a lot of people that live all over that have crazy weather, but I don't think I would be too happy right now if we had snow on the ground. Well, it melted. Yeah. I'm so ready for spring. Which yesterday was, I think, the first official day of spring, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And it feels like spring in Atlanta. We're going to barbecue hamburgers and mm -hmm. eat outside tonight on our back deck. And, uh, and then Diane and I, while she's here visiting, we're going to go to Queen of Hearts. I'm going to show her my favorite antique store. We're going to go to some of my favorite thrift stores. Um, what else should we do? Craft? I, yeah, crap. I still can't believe I'm here. I, it's Aww. to me it's just amazing mm -hmm. I'm so glad you're here too okay so same time yeah so you're gonna end up with something that looks like this and I tried whoops this, they're not always cut straight okay so I try to leave three strings on each side this could have one more taken out thank you for doing that and with the leftovers, I usually just put them straight, you know, pull them all straight, and then I'll just tie a loose knot. And that keeps them all together, and there's lots of things that you can do with that. Okay, so the next step is we are going to um, fold it in half and glue the two sides together. So I have some good... Bible verses to share with you guys about prayer, and um, I'm going to put Diane on the spot and let her share whatever the Holy Spirit leads her to. She's a Christ follower also. Um, whatever the Holy Spirit leads her to say or not say, whatever. Um, but anyways, I think prayer is an interesting topic. Uh, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of hard to understand, um, you know, I know as growing up as a little girl, I kind of thought of it as like God was this uh, vending machine in the sky and I could ask him what I wanted and he had to do it. <laughs> and now as an adult, I realize that that is, nothing can be further th from the truth. It's not like that at all. But anyways, okay, so I have a little scrap right here and I'm going to, um, this is not be big enough. I need a bigger one for mine. So I'm going to do the smaller flower first. All right, and we're, so we're using Diane's. It was about 12 inches long, roughly. Is that what I said it was? I think you said 16. 16. Yeah. And I haven't said any of my normal stuff. Dang it. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I do Christ and Crafting every Sunday. Uh, it's my favorite time of the week. Usually what I do if you're new here is um, we'll do a craft project of some sort and then we go into the Bible 
And usually the craft project is related to the Bible verses that I have been led to share with you. Um, not always, but most of the time. And so today the topic is prayer. And I hope you'll stay with me to the very end because that really is, the crafting part is wonderful, but um, the Christ part is infinitely uh, better, I think. Okay, so we glued the two pieces together. Let me show you up close. So I just folded it over and glued it. And now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna make a flat flower, is I'm gonna start on this little piece. This is gonna be our back. And by the way, if the comments are bothering you, you should be able to swipe them left or right or up or down and get rid of them. So I'm gonna do a big circle and start to push my, is this how you do it, Diane? This is how I've been doing it. I, I might not be doing it right. Actually, I've done it both ways, and I think that way's easier. Yeah. Because if you start in the center, it's it seems to bunch anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're just, I'm pushing my piece into the glue that I'm putting on here. And we'll fiddle around with it to get it, you know, even at the end. Most of these end up more of an oval for some reason than a circle, which I suppose that doesn't matter at all. Okay, so I've gone around once, and I'm gonna go around one more time. And this time I'm just going in just a little bit from the first row. This is what I mean. We're going in, can you see that? Inside of this. I might have to make this one into the bigger one because it's a little wide on the outside. So I think we'll add the brown to it. Do you, you want, want to do it? Yeah, that'd be great. How long? Uh, I don't know, 12 inches or 14 inches, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. And it's just glued on this piece. You can see the glue comes through, but that's why I'm crafting on this um, Wilton cake board, because otherwise it would be all over my desk. Okay, so now we're gonna do two rows of brown right here in the center. Oh, ladies, use a needle nose pliers. <laughs> it makes it much easier. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. Isn't it? Just go ahead and trim this back off. So this is one of the styles. And then the other style I'll show you in just a few minutes is a, a kind that I have not ever done before. Um, most of these things for me just sort of evolve out of necessity. I wanted a different kind of flower for this project. And I wanted to use these same, uh, same pieces. Okay, so this one's gonna have brown on the inside in just a minute. Let's go ahead and do this one smaller. Okay, and I'll probably cut part of it off. I'm gonna start with a smaller circle. Hopefully you guys can see okay. FYI, if you wear bifocals, make sure you have your glasses at the right edge when you're looking oh. for this. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so I've just made one loop, and the difference between this flower and the first one is that I started with a much smaller circle that I'm gluing into. So I'll go around it one more time on the inside, and then we're going to use one of the Walmart buttons that I purchased. What's going on here? Do 
you're going to have to kind of smoosh it in a little bit because it's going to want to um, go straight. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about. Okay, so definitely you want to be using a low temperature hot glue gun for this project because you should see my fingers are covered in glue. You'd have very bad burns if you didn't. And I have this extra tail here that I'm going to cut off. We'll use it for something different. Here is our littler one. Let's cut off the edge and then I'll show you how to do the button part. Who loves sunflowers? We have um, Diane just down the street from here. Um, I think it's about June. There's a sunflower farm uh, in Alpharetta, Georgia, which is where I live. And oh my gosh, they have just a huge field of sunflowers. And um, it's open to the public. You can go take pictures. Um, they ask you to buy a bouquet and it's all, you know, honor system. But um, so I usually buy a bouquet when I'm there, taking pictures of the sunflowers. See, look how cute. This is much smaller than the center on this one. Can you see that? And these are the brown buttons that are made out of wood that came from my local Walmart. And I'm just gonna take one of the bigger ones. This is pretty right here. And we'll put that right here in the center. So then these are gonna get glued on our pillows. And I can't wait to see who will be receiving this along with the other things that are in the blessing bundle. Later tonight, I'll go over that one more time and give everybody another opportunity to take a screenshot of your favorite stencil um, and put it in the comments so that if you want to have your name entered, you can get it in there. Okay, thank you, Diane. She just did this for me. This is just the same brown burlap. And I'm just going to glue my two pieces together. This is a perfect craft if you're messy. Perfect. And there's absolutely nothing precise about it either, huh? No, except you're right. Use a cool temp glue gun. I know. Yeah, otherwise you're gonna have like third degree burns all over your fingers. And I don't think you can do this kind of a project with these little, you know, you can buy these little finger protector things, but I can't do anything with those things on. So it's just better to, this, this cool shot, low temperature glue gun, it doesn't even hurt. No, not at all. When I get it on. Of course, our fingers and tips are probably so yeah. callous. We don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, so this is um, all ready to go. We're probably not going to use quite this much. We're going to put it on the center of this bigger one. And this is what's going to make it look like a sunflower because sunflowers usually have, don't they have the brown on the inside? I think they do. Yes. And it almost looks furry. Yeah. So I'm just going around the um, inside, just poking it down into the hot glue that I'm putting just inside. How many people are on? 650 people. Wow. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new, if this is your first Christ in Crafting, or if you're just plain new to DIY Dreaming, please tell me in the comments because I would love to see your name and be able to welcome you. Um, it's fun as um, we're going along because I start to see the same names and I feel like I'm starting to get to know everyone. And it starts you know, with me seeing your name the first time. So if 
if you haven't done, if you haven't been with me for Christ and Crafting before, or if you're just brand new to this page, DIY Dreaming, just let me know. Okay, we're almost done here. Okay. And um, I know you guys have been telling me <laughs> for like the last, I don't know how long, uh, last year that to fix your glue strings, just use a blow dryer or a heat gun. And I'm like, yeah, 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 right. Well, it actually works. <laughs> I did it today. I have my heat gun out. Um, we're going to pick one more brown button for this one. And then I'm going to show you that other flower. And then we're going to soon get into the Bible. Hold this up and show you. Isn't that pretty? Now you can fiddle around and get, get all your um, little things fluffed out. So here's the one, and here's the other. Cool, huh? Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so to do this flower right here, this one, this is different. Oh yeah, I definitely need some more brown. Do you mind? Nope. How much? My lovely assistant, probably um, 18 inches. And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna show you the start of it with this. Uh, trying to remember how long did I do this. Okay, so this other flower, I'm gonna just start with some of the yellow burlap. And, Here. Oh, you don't. Use I'm not. I'm not pulling strings for this flower. Okay. And I think I did it on a base of brown, so I need a little piece of brown. Thank you. I am loving this needle nose pliers. Yeah. Okay. So what I did for the center of this other flower is I just folded this in half and just put a little dab of glue there just to hold the two pieces together. And then I folded it again. And just kind of pinched it all into something like this. That part's gonna be hidden. Um, thinking about how I want to put the okay so then I'm just going to put a blob of glue here in the center this is sort of like a rolled rosette um, those always start with a knot but this was such <laughs> stiff fabric that I couldn't really do a knot so I'm just tacking that down in the center and then I am literally just going to do the exact same thing that we do with the rolled rosettes which is just twist and twirl it around the center and stick it into some glue. You've got to be generous with the glue to get it to stay. So we're just forming the center of a brown flower. And this is what I have so far. You can make this as big or as little as you want. I'm going to go around just a little bit more. This part wasn't tight. I, all yeah, it. it's okay. Okay, so I'm going to go just a little bit further and then we'll say good. Alright, and what I have here now is just a a rolled and twisted 
like bud in the center of this. All right, and I'm going to just cut off my tail and then we're gonna kind of smoosh it all together and glue, it looks like this, and we're just gonna glue it in. What would we do without hot glue? Oh my word. Crafting would be an entirely different experience, wouldn't it? If you had to wait for every little thing to dry. This is where you for sure need a low temperature. Okay, look at my fingers. All right, so this is what we have now. What do you guys think? Did you know you could do a rolled rosette with burlap ribbon? Okay, so now I'm gonna take what Diane did for me this part and do the same thing as we always do. We're gonna glue the two sides together. Meanwhile, she's straightening out all the strings for me, thank you. I need to have a lovely assistant all the time. Well, I love being here watching. <laughs> Diane has a page too. Um, she's a creator also. And her page is DIY with Lady Di. And I bet you a lot of you guys that follow me, you probably also follow Diane. Because we're good friends and we're we have similar kind of crafting projects. Have so much glue stuck on my fingers. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, seriously, I've got to take a moment to get some of that off because I can't even feel what I'm doing. There's so much glue on my fingers. That's how I feel when I use those little pink things. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I can't hold on to things with those on. No. Okay, so the if you're joining us late, we're making a pillow that says, I still remember the days. I prayed for the things that I have now. It's got some of these awesome uh, pulled string burlap flowers and rolled rosette burlap flowers in this yellow and brown that look like sunflowers, or at least give you that impression. And um, we just did the stencil, so it's drying. I'll show you that in just a minute. Right now we're finishing up one more flower. And I'll show you how we put those on. And then we're gonna go into the Bible and talk about prayer. So if you are new, um, tell me in the comments so that I can see your name and uh, think about you. If you're new to um, Christ and Crafting, do that. If you're new to DIY Dreaming, do that too. And um, I'm putting these pillows into my blessing bundles that I'm going to choose two names tomorrow. So there's a garbage can right at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to start a little ways out and go around twice, just like we did with the other things. So I'm starting a little ways out because I want to do one ring and then I want to go in close. Isn't that, isn't that cute, that pillow, the one that's finished? Yes, it's adorable. I know, I almost want to keep it for myself. Of course, I can always make 12 more. Yes. But I can't wait to see who. <sighs> whoever, whoever is the recipient of these blessing bundles, you are going to love them. Because I can see the Yeah, they're sitting right over here. They're laying here. <laughs> And I probably will add some craft supplies to them. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly, but most likely some vintage um, book pages or sheet music. I don't know, a few of my favorite things. Okay, so we're getting there. So I've gone one ring around, and that's what the back looks like. Big mess of glue. And now I'm going to just take this and go in closer. And then I will um, use my heat gun to melt 
all this the glue mask because it's pretty messy looking. I've never tried that. It really works. It well. really works. I've been afraid to because I was. I know. Don't ever get your glue gun close to your stencils though. Oh, you've done that before, haven't you? The heat you? gun, yes. Yeah, your heat gun because you can you can melt them. It just melts. It crinkles it right up. That is not good. Yep. Oh, That's man. a perfect. This leg. was perfect. Oh my word, that could not have been more perfect. That fits exactly. So you wanna show them the pillow while I cut this? Oops, it would help if I showed it right side up. That's what we did earlier. We used um, this awesome stencil from Magnolia, which I'll get you guys links, I didn't think to. I was so excited to have my friend here, I forgot to do all the other it's stuff. It's nice and crisp. It's really great. Yeah, and so it's made with brown ink. It's called Cocoa Bean Ink, and then that stencil. Okay, so here's the flower, and I'm going to cut this back off of it. And then we will be ready to glue them on. We'll still probably have to be a little careful for the ink. I don't know if it's completely dry yet. but um, And then we'll talk about prayer. I'm just cutting around the base of this to just take the excess off. And this pillow is, uh, it, it would technically be washable because I'm using ink and I'll heat set it. But don't put it in the washing machine because the flowers will completely come apart. Also, I would consider this pillow more of a decorative accent than a super functional Thing. So don't take a nap on top of it or, you know. Thank you. And look. Well, that's adorable. That pretty? Okay, so let me get my heat gun out. I do this a hundred times every day. This is the one you told me to get. melts them right away. Yeah, and they just sort of disappear. I was always afraid that it would loosen up the glue, so I didn't try it. Awesome. Listen up. The heat gun um, is a little bit hotter than a blow dryer, so that works better too. And this guy right here, do you remember what the brand is? Chandler Tool. I bought mine on Amazon, um, and it was how much? Like twenty dollars or nineteen dollars? I think it was like I don't know. When I got it, I think it was like seventeen ninety nine. Yeah, or something. not expensive at all. <coughs> well worth it. Mine has yeah. gone through several years and never had a problem. So we're just melting the glue strings and pushing our flowers a little bit. Oh my gosh, you guys are so kind to me. Okay. Good enough. So, now we have our three flowers. And... one that I made earlier today. Isn't it cute? So I put the little yellow flower in the top left corner and then the, the brown one here and then the bigger one in the bottom. Did I do the bigger one right? Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, but I think we'll, let's put the big one down here. Let's mix it up a little bit. No. What do you think, Diane? How would you place them? That's a good question. Come around here and you tell me where to put them. 
It's all in the eye of the beholder. I don't like that one with that one, I think. I think I like those two together. Yeah. And I think these two up here are gonna feel too heavy. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So I'm just, I'm not using any special fabric um, hot glue, low temperature hot glue. This is just regular Sherbonder Cool Shot low temperature hot glue. Um, and uh, because this is not gonna get washed, there's really no reason to use the more expensive Plus, it dries white, and did I want that sort of over the top, you think? Okay. Yeah, because you don't want to get rid of that pretty one in the middle, Yeah. the new one. Perfect. Okay, and then I'll come back later and tack these down even more, but I want to show you the two pillows. And then, let's talk about prayer. I mean, if you're like me, um, you probably have a lot of questions about prayer. I know I do. Um, and if we're praying to God, who better to go to than God to find out what prayer is all about? And how can you hear from God to know what prayer is all about? By reading his word. So that's why we're going to go into the Bible. Okay, so here's one. And here's the other. And aren't they super cute? I don't know where to put them so you can see. I don't think you'd be able to see both of them. Anyways. Yeah, so we'll be pulling two names tomorrow. And I'll come live a little bit later to show you the two blessing bundles because they're also going to include some of these bracelets that we made yesterday. Those are Did you guys so see these? cute. What colors did you use on this, this one? This is um, the glittering gold and the shimmering silver. Silver. Oh, that's yeah. so pretty. And um, these are just these little leather cuffs that you can get at Hobby Lobby. And these are button covers that used to be so in in the 90s. And so I just put those on over the top of the snap so that this can be your little decoration on your bracelet. This one has sterling silver and a piece of turquoise on it. Oh, that is gorgeous. And then here's the one I finished off today. So aren't those cute? And they took no time at all. This is ink also, just like what we used here for this pillow project. It's, oops, it's not very really dry. <laughs> that one I think is the wet one. Um, so, and I used my uh, Victorian lace stencil that I love so much to make those. So the bundles tomorrow will include these. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna keep for myself, but I'm gonna keep one of them. I don't know. I'll keep one of those. Okay, so let's let me move my camera just a little bit so you can see both Diane and I. Come in. Okay. Oh, that chair's gonna be way too short. Does it have an adjustment? I don't know if it adjusts. Oh, it does. What do you know? It's still going to be a little short. That's but... okay. Okay. So, wait. We're, we're leaning to the side. Does that feel like we're sideways? Okay. No, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> student. <laughs> I've got a feeling we're going to do a lot of laughing this week. <laughs> I'm always the gigantic person at because I'm tall and, you know, but tall bigger, bigger, like 5'8", five, 5'8". Five, That's eight how tall I am. Yeah. So, now I feel really big and tall. <laughs> um, okay, so we're talking about prayer today. And, um, like, every week, I'm like, Lord, I wrote down a bunch of ideas. And then I said, show me, tell me 
help me figure out what you want me to talk about. And so, you know, I think some things that a lot of people wonder, me included, are, does God hear my prayers? I mean, is that something that you've wondered? Um, does God answer my prayers? Uh, how and when and how often are we supposed to pray? And what should that look like? And what is the purpose of praying? So as a child, um, I kind of thought that praying was just asking God what you wanted and that he would give you what you wanted. I don't know. That's super immature, but... But that's being a child. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, just like you, I have periods where I'm in prayer a lot and then periods when I'm out of prayer a lot. And, you know, we, as a, a Christ follower, we all have ebbs and flows of times when we're intimately, intensely connected to our Heavenly Father and we're hearing Him and we're seeing Him and we're talking mm -hmm. to Him all day long. And then for no reason whatsoever, we get busy and we forget. And I'm, I'm telling on myself completely here. So, um, yeah, does that sound right, what I've said? Absolutely. When we start going on our list, I'm a list person. Me too. And when I start going on my list and checking it all off, guess what goes to the bottom of the list? Mm -hmm. Because I get busy. I know, me too. And what does busy stand for? It's something. Uh, it's there's an acronym for that that's something bad <laughs> I can't remember what it is we don't want to know what that yeah. is bad. yeah anyways so let's talk about the first question does God hear your prayers do you guys ever wonder that um, because he doesn't speak audibly to most of us at least he doesn't speak audibly you know I don't hear a voice when I'm praying um, so I wonder, does, does God hear my prayers? And I want to go to 1 Peter to start. Look at my poor little Bible that's fallen apart. That's the sign of someone who spent a lot of time yeah. in the Word. It's, where is Peter? Peter 3.12. Okay. Let's get this one about wives and husbands. A lot of people object to that. Okay, so um, this is my Bible. And in case you're wondering if you're new, it's a life application study Bible. And my translation is NIV. What translation do you? That's what I need. Yeah. That's just what I first... When I was a new believer and I asked my husband for a Bible, that's just what he bought. So that's kind of a, the mode that I'm in. I always think of all my verses in the NIV translation. So, um, and I've scribbled my life all over my Bible. So if you like paper, I'd recommend you get a paper Bible. Absolutely. And then you write your life into it. Because then when you look back, you can see, you can remember, um, different things. Okay, so I'm really going off on a track. Okay, so um, 1 Peter 3, 12 says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. So this is talking about God, that he's, he's looking at us and he hears us when we pray. And then in Jeremiah, this is a super well-known verse. You might even be able to say it off the top of your head. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Something to that effect. Um, but there's another part to that that's really good. You're a neat scribbler, right? Mm, not really. <laughs> oh, here's a note on a different verse that where well, I was having a dry patch and I wrote, 2017, bring, bring me back after a long dry summer. 
I just, I remember things from what I have written down. Okay, so going to Jeremiah chapter 29, I'll start with that um, verse that's so well known. Okay, and it says at verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. So God is saying right here that when you call upon him, uh, he, will, he will listen. He will, he will listen to our, our prayers and our concerns. Um, and then I want to go to 1 John. why I have this picture of Noah in my Bible. Oh, <laughs> He would be embarrassed if I showed it to you. He had no hair and the rosiest little cheeks ever. Okay, 1 John chapter 5 verse 11. Wait. Oh, verse 14, sorry. Wait, I don't have that written down right. 514. Oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. Oh my goodness, no wonder I'm in chapter 4. Okay. Um, this is uh, the end of this chapter, and it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That we, if we ask anything according to his will, God's will, he hears us. And if we, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have what we asked of him. And we're going to come back to that thought in just a minute because that is one of those verses of the Bible that people can get all tangled mm -hmm. up in that um, they think says that whatever I ask God, he will give me. Right? And then they get disappointed when he doesn't. And yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going to come back to that. But the important part of that was where it says, uh, when we ask according to God's will, he hears us. Okay, so then does God answer my prayers? That was the second question that I think a lot of people have, myself included. And um, just off the top of my head, I would say, yes, he absolutely answers our prayers. But... He doesn't always say yes. A lot of the time he says no. He says, no child, it's not good for you. It's not part of my plan. In the long run, it will hurt you. Uh, it's not part of what I have worked out for you. So he does answer, but a lot of times he says no. And he loves us, you guys, he loves us. And when he says no to us, it's not because he wants to spite us or hurt us. I mean, he sees everything top bottom front back forward backwards he can see everything and um and he has a good plan for us and a lot of times the things that we ask for he says no other times he says child wait it's so much like a parent god is our heavenly father mm -hmm. and as parents we tell our children no and we tell them sometimes they ask us for something and we say, wait, I have to think about that. Well, God already knows what his, his answer is going to be, not that he has to sit and think about it. But to God, a thousand years is like a day. Mm -hmm. And when you tell your child no, you'll have to, or not, that you'll need to wait till I talk to your father or whatever. That can seem like a thousand years yeah. to them. But yeah. God... We aren't doing it to be mean to our children. We just, we know better. We love our children. I've told this story so many times about how I really didn't put my trust in Christ fully until I had a child of my own. And then I could understand love, that he would love us so much, that he would send his son to die for us so that, so that our sins could be forgiven and so that we could have eternal life but also draw near to him now and um that love 
that I had for my child is just minuscule compared to the love that God has for us. And, I mean, he says no to us or wait to us a lot of times out of that love, that, that parental love that he has. So, um, so yeah, he, um, he will say yes or wait or no. He, but he does always answer. The problem is a lot of times we don't wait. <laughs> we present our request and then we get busy do, making it happen and Absolutely. wait for God's answer. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was how God will always say yes. He always says yes when what we're asking for is his will to be done. And, um, and so you can be assured that if it is God's will, that yet your answer will be yes. Absolutely. What do you want to say about that? Anything? No. Um, I need to go take ahead. My nose is running. Oh, you go ahead. For just a second. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm thinking as Heidi is talking, in the Old Testament, the Israelites had to bring all of their sacrifices to the temple, and only one priest was able to go into the Holy of Holies to be before God. Mm -hmm. And now, the New Testament, after G first of all, Jesus' primary thing was when he was going to go through terror things that he knew he was going through, he would go away and pray. Mm -hmm. I was reading about that earlier. He would, he would always go away and pray. And the more problems he knew he was going to confront, the more he would pray. But now Jesus is our high priest, and the New Testament said we can come directly to him. There is nothing between us and Jesus anymore. Mm -hmm. The cross took all of that away. Mm -hmm. We can go directly to him. And... If it is his will, yes, he will say yes. Mm -hmm. And that's so hard to say, not my will, Lord, <laughs> but your will. And I mean, I struggle with that. I don't know if oh. you're over it or not. Because I, sometimes I just want what I want, and I want what I want. Ten minutes ago. Uh -huh. And um, I want God to want what I want, too, because I want it. Uh, but... It's not our will, it's God's will. So anytime you come to God and you're asking that his will be done, you're, you're asking for whatever it is that's in his will, then the answer is always going to be yes. But that's that part of that verse whoops, that gets uh, mixed up because this is in um, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything, according to his will he hears us and we know and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have what we asked of him if it's according to his will so be cautious about listening to people that want to twist that around you know there's a lot of different I don't know, movements and things. Prosperity. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but that is not what the Bible says. And anytime there's a question or you have a little check in your spirit, something doesn't sound right, then you need to go to God's word and you need to pray and ask for him to make it clear. Don't listen to somebody else. Don't listen to us. If God is telling you something different, always go to the Father. Um... Okay, so when should we pray? That was one other question. And um, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says to pray without ceasing. I won't look it up, but that's the gist of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was the Apostle Paul, when he was um, traveling around to all the different churches, he was talking about the Pharisees, and those were the religious leaders of the time, and how they would be out on the street corner, <laughs> very pious, 
piously praying out loud and um, everything that they did was for the bed for their own benefit for people to see them but that is not the kind of prayer that God wants he doesn't want us going on and on and on with all these religious words I mean if if the Holy Spirit is telling you to pray in that way then uh, of course pray that way but a lot of times I'll just have a, a 20 second conversation with God throughout the day and it's not formal it's not dear Heavenly Father which is how I pray when I am you know in a more having more time for prayer but he wants us to talk to him throughout our whole day and it doesn't have to be on your knees with your eyes closed is that right that's right yeah I prayed a lot driving a thousand oh, miles here oh, yeah gosh yeah so another thing is that um, he also wants us to pray prayers of Thanksgiving so this is something that I do a lot um, <laughs> whenever something good happens to me I want my first reaction to be thank you Lord and so a lot of times when I've almost had a car accident or almost ran into somebody or I'm, I'm thinking about driving you know I'll say oh thank you so he wants us praying prayers where we're, it's called supplication when we're asking for something. But he also wants us to be praying prayers of thanksgiving and adoration of him. He wants us to remember who he is and who we are. Absolutely. Um, so I don't, I don't know if this is helpful or not. But um, just to conclude, um, my last thought about prayer is that the purpose of prayer is not to put your 25 cents in the vending machine and pull out a bag of Cheetos. Or now it's $1.99 or whatever. <laughs> um, that's not the purpose of prayer, to go and do our thing and then get what we want. The purpose of prayer is not to change our situation. The purpose of prayer is to change us, to change our hearts and to remind us of our dependence on God and to remind us who he is and who we are and I don't know what would you add to that anything I would encourage you if you don't have someone that you can pray with to find a friend Heidi and I we've live, prayed on the phone a few times we've prayed on the phone we've laughed we've cried we've prayed through situations and that's why when I walked up to her door, I had never physically met her before, but I felt like I knew yeah. her because God has brought us together. So if you can find someone, and in this time, if you can't get out with COVID, call someone on the phone. Mm -hmm. Just give them a prayer request. Tell them, hey, I'm really struggling with this today. Would you pray for me? Mm -hmm. It's awesome to have that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome to be that kind of a person for somebody else. So if you're, uh, I know when I was a new believer, I felt so uncomfortable to pray. Okay, so my first real experience with praying in front of people was I was, um, I was the craft lady for my mother's a preschooler group. It's called Mops at my church. And I was part of the leaders council and we would have to do a, it would go round table, but we'd have to do a devotion and then we'd have to pray and oh my word. I would be so nervous <laughs> for that because I was focused on me, not on who I was talking to. Um, so once you can get your eyes off of yourself and free yourself from the idea that your prayer has to do a certain format, mm then it will feel way more comfortable for you to pray for somebody else. And if, um, if you do feel comfortable, then be that person who, when a friend says, I'm really struggling, say, you know, and you're on the phone or at a restaurant or wherever, it's good for people to see us praying. Um, say, can I pray for you? And then pray out loud with that person, whether it's on the phone or however it might be. Um, my husband has something that he does. If 
when we're in a restaurant, which we haven't been a lot lately, but when the waitress comes up and when she takes our order, he'll say, my wife and I always pray before we eat. Is there anything special that we could oh, pray for you for? And I love that. sometimes people say, oh, no, thanks. But sometimes people really open up their hearts. Wow. And they're really touched by that because people need that. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think today... Um, it's March 2021, so we're, I don't know, are we still in this COVID mess or are we getting out of it? I'm having the vaccine on Monday. Yay! And Diane's already had both, both of them. hers. Um, you know, people are, it's a scary time. So people need prayer. Yeah. They need to know you care. Mm -hmm. And if you can just keep these things in mind that um, God does hear your prayers, that he does answer your prayers. It's just not always what you want it to be. Um, that we don't have to pray in any formal, fancy, schmancy way. That we can pray throughout our day. Uh, it doesn't have to be on your knees with your eyes closed um, or any mat. There's no magic words. And, um, and then just... Keep in mind that the purpose of the pr of prayer really is to to um, bring us closer to our heavenly Father and align us with His will. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I think you said it all. Yeah. So um, I hope whoever receives these two pillows that you'll you'll think about that when you see this. I still remember the days that I prayed for the things that I have now. Um, and I just so appreciate all you guys, uh, watching. If I can be praying for anyone, um, I would be honored to. So feel free to put your prayer requests in the comments, or if it's a more personal thing, um, feel free to send me a personal message. I'm going to hop off and look at some of the comments and then I'm going to visit with my friend that just arrived. So I'll read everything later tonight, but I will be live again in a little while to show you the blessing bundles and to tell you how to get your name in the hat for that for tomorrow morning. Okie doke. Bye. All right. Thanks everyone.